Hi, I'm Matt Singer for IFC News at the 2008 Tribeca Film Festival. New York City's biggest party of the 1990s is back for one night only to celebrate the premiere of Squeezebox, the documentary about the rock and roll bash where drag queens and average shows alike express themselves freely. When you say the word Squeezebox, what's the first word that comes to your mind? Whiskey. Freedom. Cocaine. Family. Please. Decadence. Sorry. Bear in mind, IFC's uncensored. You can say anything you want. Fun. Some people ask me, why did Squeezebox end? Well, ladies and gentlemen, when you get a bunch of dysfunctional alcoholic drug addicts who can't get it together, well, hey, once you can't last forever. Yes, exactly. What made Squeezebox, you know, worthy of a documentary, all of, uh, focus just about, about that? It's honesty and the fact that everybody there really supported one another um, to be as extreme as they possibly could be, and they were. You could be the biggest Mary in the world and like have fun dancing to the Ramones, you know? Yeah. It was great. You know, it was also this moment where it happened very suddenly where drag stopped being about Betty Davis and, and, and Marlena Dietrich and started being about Patti Smith and Debbie Harry and Yoko Ono. And the bands were great. You never know who was going to show up. You know, they really rocked out. Squeeze Park was a beehive of gay people that didn't fit in the gay world either. It was one of the only gay bars in the world I ever felt comfortable in. It was crowded and hot and wild and explosive with dynamite performances. Most gay people like dance music, but Squeezebox was kind of like the rock and roll gays saying, this is our turf, we're tired of all the mainstream bullshit. What was your reaction when you heard they were going to make a documentary about Squeezebox? Well, I thought they had to because, you know, uh, we can't let the Squeezebox be forgotten about like, like CBG was in Massachusetts, Kansas City. It was a, a pioneering place that was doing something that the rest of the country was not doing. Thank God we had the foresight to run the cameras when we did because a lot of moments, really special moments, we caught and they're in the movie. People will get to actually see them and those of us who were there who were too drunk to remember it at the time will be able to see it as well. How about having the film at Tribeca? I mean, I'm sure this was where you guys wanted it to be. The party happened blocks away from where the film was premiering, so how that's so perfect, you know? It's, it couldn't be a better spot for it to premiere, you know? We've been working on this movie for seven years. The club lasted seven years, and Tribeca's in the seventh year, so it's about damn time. It reminds me why I'm half deaf. It reminds me why I can't remember the 90s. Squeezebox, it was fun. Rock and roll, baby. New York is lost it for now. It's coming back. I'm Matt Singer, and for the very latest from the Tribeca Film Festival, go to our website, ifc.com slash Tribeca Film Festival. <laughs>